Okay, so the goal of this video is to go over the division algorithm in f bracket x and do a few examples. So we'll start with the theorem, we'll start with a few examples, and then we'll go through the proof of this theorem. So what does the division algorithm say? The division algorithm says, suppose f is a field, so it takes place in f bracket x, my polynomials have coefficients from a field, and let a of x and b of x be two polynomials in f bracket x, then there exists unique polynomials q of x and r of x, such that a is equal to b q plus r, and the degree of r is less than the degree of b, or r is equal to zero. Because remember, we didn't assign the zero polynomial a degree. Okay, so this is, you can compare this to the division algorithm in z, right? It had the same form. It was a is equal to b, q plus r. Uh, q and r were unique. But instead of degree of r is less than the degree of b, we simply just said r is less than b. Okay, so let's go, let's go through a few examples. So the first example, we'll look at the polynomials. Let's take a of x to be 2x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And we'll take b of x to be the polynomial x squared plus 3x plus 1. And let's say we're taking, this is taking place in q bracket x. Okay, so how do we do our long division? Well, um, what we're going to do is we'll do polynomial long division to find our quotient and our remainder. So I'm going to write my a of x underneath here. I'll write 2x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And I'll write my b of x to the left of this vertical line. So I'll write, write this over here, x squared plus 3x plus 1. And when I look at an expression like this, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking at the leading term here. This is 2x cubed. And I ask myself, how do I get from x squared to 2x cubed. Well, the way we do that is we multiply by 2x. So I'm going to take 2x and multiply this entire term by 2x and write that down. So let's do that. So I'm going to get 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 2x. And then the idea is I want to subtract this off. Okay. So when I do the subtraction, let's see what I get. Well, 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0 x squared minus 6x squared is minus 5x squared, x minus 2x is minus x, and I'm going to drop down the 1. Okay, so this is our first step. Now I look at, well, I have this minus 5x squared. How do I get from x squared to minus 5x squared? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by negative 5. So I'm going to write a negative 5 up top, and I'm going to take negative 5 times this whole polynomial and write it down here. So let's do that. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared negative 5 times 3x is minus 15x, and negative 5 times 1 is minus 1, or rather, minus 5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this off. So let's clean this up. This was a minus 5. And so what do I get? I get negative 5x squared plus 5x squared, that's 0. Minus x plus 15x is going to be 14x. And then 1 plus 5 is 6. Okay, so I'm going to stop here now because I've reached my remainder. My remainder is 14x plus 6, and my quotient is going to be up here. It's this 2x minus 5. Okay, so the, the key is we stop when the remainder that we have down here has degree less than our b, right? So in, in, in essence, what we found is that our q of x is going to be 2x minus 5. That's our quotient. And our remainder, our r of x, is going to be 14x plus 6. Right? So in essence, what have, we, what have we done? We've taken our a of x, our 2x cubed, plus x squared, plus x plus 1, and we've written it as b of x, so that's x squared plus 3x plus 1, times q of x, so that's 2x minus 5, is plus uh, our remainder, 14x plus 6. Okay? So this is our form a is equal to b, q plus r. So we found our quotient and we found our remainder. Okay, so let's do another more interesting example now in something that may, might not be uh, a nice field like q bracket x. Let's try something in z7. Okay, so let's try this example now. We'll take a of x to be 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2 and b of x to be 2x squared plus 5x and we'll compute their quotient and remainder in z7 bracket x. Um, so let's write this down. Notice that our a of x, that's, that's our higher degree term, it's 3 of x, 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus, I'm going to write this as 0x plus 2, so I'm going to include this 0 just for bookkeeping purposes, and b of x I'm going to put in on the left-hand side, so it's going to be 2x squared plus 5x. 
Okay. And now we have to ask ourselves, well, let's, let's follow the same strategy. I need to look at this leading term, this 3x cubed, and somehow transform 2x squared into that. And I asked myself, in Z mod 7, what should I multiply 2 by to transform it into a 3, right? And what I might notice is that 2 times 5 is 10, but that's equal to 3 in Z mod 7. Um, in order to get from x squared to x, I need to multiply by x. So the term I'm going to multiply by is 5x, right? So 5x times 2x squared is 10x squared, or rather is 10x cubed, but 10x cubed is the same as 3x cubed. 5x times 5x is 25x squared, but what is 25 in z mod 7? 25 is 4. Okay, so this is going to be plus 4x squared, and then I'm going to subtract this off. Right? So again, the idea is that 5x times 2x squared is 3x cubed, and 5x times 5x is 4x squared, because all, all our coefficients are in z mod 7. Okay, so let's subtract these off. 3x cubed minus 3x cubed is 0. 3x squared minus 4x squared is minus x squared. And then I'm going to just drop down plus 0x plus 2. Okay, now I notice I have this minus x squared. I'm going to rewrite this minus x squared as a 6x squared, because in z mod 7, negative 1 and 6 are the same. Okay, so now I look at this again and I ask myself, well, how do I get from 2x squared to 6x squared? And the answer is pretty simple. I multiply by 3, right? So I'm going to write plus 3, and let's multiply this whole term by 3. So I'm going to get a 6x squared plus 3 times 5x is 15x, and 15 in z mod 7 is the same as 1. So 15x becomes 1x, and I'm going to subtract this off. So when I subtract, I'm going to get 6x squared minus 6x squared is 0. 0x zero minus x is minus x plus 2. And again, remember, minus x is going to be replaced by 6x because minus 1 and 6 are the same in z mod 7. Okay, so now I have my quotient and I have my remainder, right? So to kind of indicate these, this is my r of x. And this guy right here is my q of x. Okay, so let's write down our expression. Um, we have 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2 is equal to b of x, so that's 2x squared plus 5x, times q of x, which is 5x plus 3, plus the remainder, which is 6x plus 2. And we can, we can go ahead and check that this all works out, right? So for example, um, if I were to multiply this out, 2x squared times 5x would be 10x cubed, but 10 is the same as 3, so we get 3x cubed. How can I produce x squared terms? Well, 2x squared times 3 is 6x squared. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. And we know that 25 in z mod 7 is 4. So what I'm really looking at is 6 plus 4x squared. But that's 10. And so 10x squared is the same as 3x squared. And then we can go through and check, check all the other terms as well. So for example, uh, 5x times 3x is 15x, and 15 is the same as 1, so 15x is just x, and then x plus 6x is 7x, but 7 is the same as 0, so 7x is the same as 0. And then finally, we can ask what's our constant term. Well, there's no constant term here, but there is this constant term here, and that's equal to 2, right? So we've gone through and checked all this. So one thing I'd like to point out is that this theorem doesn't hold if f is not a field. So what we'll consider is these two polynomials x squared plus 1 and 2x in z bracket x, right? So in z bracket x, the idea is that I cannot express x squared plus 1 as 2x times a quotient plus a remainder, where the remainder must have degree less than 2x, right? So or less than the degree of 2x. So this, this would require that r of x is a constant polynomial, because the only polynomials that have degree less than degree of 2x must have degree zero, which means that they have to be constant polynomials or they have to be the zero polynomial. Um, so, so the idea is that when I write this kind of expression, there's nothing I can multiply 2x by in order to create x squared because the coefficients of q bracket x have to come from z. And this guy right here is just going to be a constant, so this is not going to affect any powers of x, right? So the idea is this, this theorem, these quotient and remainders, they're not guaranteed to exist 
um, if I'm not working with a field. And this will become evident in the proof as well. Um, the idea is that this Q of X needs, needs to somehow contain the multiplicative inverse of two to make this two go away and turn it into an X squared. So we're finally ready to go through with the proof of the division algorithm in F bracket X. And we'll start with the existence portion. Okay, so we're gonna take two polynomials, A of X is A0 plus A1X plus da 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 plus AMX to the M. And B of X is B0 plus B1X plus da 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 plus BNX to the N. And the first part will be pretty straightforward. So the first thing we'll notice is that if either A of X is equal to zero or the degree of A of X is, e is less than, strictly less than the degree of B of X, we can choose the following. We can choose Q of X to be zero and R of X to be A of X, right? And now the idea is what? Well, A of X is equal to zero times B of X plus A of X. And in particular, the degree of A of X is less than the degree of B of X or A of X is equal to zero, right? So this is kind of like the first easy case. It's kind of like if I take a, a small degree polynomial and try to divide it by a larger degree polynomial, I should get a quotient of zero and the remainder should just be my original polynomial A of X. Okay, so this takes care of the easy part of the existence portion. Okay, so we now need to show this theorem is true when the degree of A of X is bigger than or equal to the degree of B of X. We've taken care of the case where the degree of A is less than the degree of B or the case where A is equal to zero. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to induct on the degree of A, so we're gonna induct on M. Okay, so first let's consider the case where the degree of A of X is equal to zero, right? So then we know that A of X is equal to some constant R and it's a non-zero constant. Okay, because we already took care of the case A of X is equal to zero, so this is gonna be a non-zero constant. Um, and we also don't assign a degree to uh, the zero polynomial. So A of X is equal to R for some element in my field. And then I could say since the degree of B of X is less than or equal to the degree of A of X, which is equal to zero, this implies that the degree of B of X must be zero. In other words, we know that B of X is equal to S for some S in my field, right? We know that B is non-zero by assumption. So this is also pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let Q of X equal R times S inverse and R of X equals zero, right? So then what we'll have is that A of X is equal to B of X times Q of X plus R of X. And we can check this, right? We can check that R is actually equal to S times R S inverse plus zero, right? And the idea is we're working in a field. So this is a commutative ring. Um, so when I take S times R times S inverse, this is going to be the same as S times S inverse times R. And we could use associativity to move those parentheses and we get R, right? So we do actually have A is equal to BQ plus R. Okay, so we've proved the base case. Okay, so now we're ready for our inductive step. So what are we going to do? Well, first thing, when I write this expression up here, this is where I'm gonna need that the leading coefficients are non-zero. So I'm gonna assume that I've not written any um, zeros as the high, attached to the highest powers of X here. So AM in particular is non-zero and BN is non-zero. And since we're inducting on the degree of A, I'm going to suppose that the theorem holds for all polynomials with degree less than M. Right, so what I'm going to first do is construct a polynomial of a degree less than M and apply the theorem to that polynomial. And how am I gonna do this? Well, I'm gonna be a little bit clever about it. I'm gonna take A of X and B of X and combine them in a way that I chop off that highest power term in A. I wanna kind of chop off that A M X to the M. So what am I going to do? I'm going to form this polynomial A one of X and this polynomial is just A of X minus, well, since the degree of B is less than or equal to the degree of A, I need to bump up the power of X in B and get rid of that coefficient and replace it with a, an AM. So what am I going to do? I'm gonna take A of X minus an AM of BN inverse and X to the M minus N B of X. 
right? So again, what am I doing here? I am bumping up the power of b of x to be x to the m. That's what I want to turn that leading coefficient into. I'm removing the bn inverse, or rather removing the bn by multiplying by bn inverse, and then attaching an am, right? So what does this polynomial look like? It's got a bunch of terms. I don't know what they look like, but the highest term that appears is going to be am minus am x to the m, right? So it's going to be a bunch of terms plus a zero x to the m. And so in, in essence, all I've done is I've eliminated that highest power term. Okay, so now by our inductive hypothesis, so by induction, um, there exist polynomials q of x, let's, let's call them q1 of x and r1 of x, such that, well, what do we know? We know that a1 of x can be written as q1 of x times b of x plus r1 of x. And we know that either the degree of r1 is less than the degree of b, or r1 of x is equal to zero. All right, so we know that one of those two hold. So let's make a little bit more space and finish this up. Okay, so what do I do now? Well, if I look at my expression up here, I can rewrite this in terms of a of x, and I already have something for a1 of x here. So let's rewrite this. I know that a of x is equal to a1 of x plus a m b n inverse, or yeah, b n inverse x to the m minus n times b of x. And what do I know about a1? Well, I know that I can rewrite a1, right? a1 can be written as q1 b plus r1. So let's rewrite a1 here. So I'm going to rewrite this whole expression as q1 of x plus a m b n inverse x to the m minus n all of this times b of x, and then I'm going to leave the r1 on the outside. So I'm going to write this as r1 of x. And notice what I've done. I've written a, a as a quotient times b plus a remainder, and the remainder satisfies the conditions we need it to satisfy. Right. So now the idea is I'm going to let uh, q of x be this new expression I've written down, q1 of x plus a m b n inverse x to the m minus n, right, so that's my quotient, and r of x is just going to be r1 of x, right, so I finished the existence portion of my theorem. Okay, and we're finally ready to do the uniqueness portion, and luckily this part is a little bit easier. So let's suppose that I have two possible quotients and two possible remainders, so I'll suppose that a can be written as q1b plus r1, and it can also be written as q2b plus r2, and our remainders satisfy the, the necessary conditions. Okay, so um, I'm going to suppose that q1 does not equal q2, right? In, in which case we know that q1 minus q2 is non-zero, and I'm going to try to get to a contradiction. So let's look at this expression right here, and I'm going to take this expression and rewrite it. So I'm going to move all the q's and b's to one side and the r1 and r2 to the other side, right? So we have that q1 of x minus q2 of x times b of x is equal to r2 of x minus r1 of x, right? And we run into a problem right away. Why do we run into a problem? Well, the degree on this side is going to be strictly less than the degree of b, right? So the degree on this side is strictly less than the degree of b because I'm subtracting two polynomials that already have degree less than b, um, and so their difference is going to have degree less than b. On this side, on the other hand, since q1 minus q2 is not equal to 0, I know that the degree here is bigger than or equal to the degree of b. Right? So the degree of this side has to be bigger than or equal to the degree of b, because I have some polynomial times b of x that's either going to have the same degree as b of x or a larger degree. Um, but this is a contradiction. Right? So this is a contradiction. So we know that q1 of x must equal q2 of x. Okay, and then finally, what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that a of x can be written as qb plus r1 and qb plus r2, right? So this implies that q1 b of x, right, q1, whoops, sorry, q1 of x times b of x plus r1 of x is equal to q1 of x b of x plus r2 of x. And if we just subtract q1 of x b of x from both sides, 
What does that tell me? Well, this implies right away that r1 of x is equal to r2 of x, and that finish th finishes the uniqueness portion of our proof.